Good Thursday morning, everybody, on this August 24th. Chris Allen here on the SAM channel, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X, all sponsored by Ace Hardware Marketplace. So it was another scorcher yesterday. We officially hit a high of 96 in Bowling Green. That's just one degree shy, not of a record, but of the warmest day so far in this year, which was July 28th when we hit 97, and I think today we could hit 97, possibly 98. I still think either today or tomorrow or both days are going to be the two hottest days of the year, except for that one July 28th day when we hit 97. Now, 96 that we hit yesterday, that was seven degrees warmer than the average of 89 and that daily average is going to start to come down a little bit more each two or three days or so that's because of the shorter days the longer nights the closer we get to the beginning of autumn um and it's not because of the cool down coming this weekend it's just we're at that point at the end of august when we start to see the average high and the average lows start going down as it should as we transition from late summer to early fall. Uh, so things are going to change regardless of what the, <laughs> the short-term forecast shows, which is more heat. But we do see better rain chances starting to enter the picture. Now, this is a look at radar as of uh, almost 7 a.m. Uh, on this Thursday morning. And you'll note this big complex, it is decaying. And it's going to follow the track here of this frontal boundary. So it looks like it's going to be steered a little more south and east. But before it gets steered, it is going to come, I think, and affect parts of eastern Kentucky. Here we are right here in, you know, to the west and southwest of that complex. Uh, unless there's some back building that happens, you know, back here, if it happens to tap into an old boundary. Uh, which I doubt there's much of one because it's just been nothing but heat the last couple of days. Um, I don't think we're going to see anything out of this today. There there could be some counties to the far east of us in the central bluegrass, more along Interstate 75, that could get something out of this this morning. Cincinnati's getting something. Uh, you get up into Columbus, Ohio, Dayton. They're all getting some thunderstorms and some brief heavy rain. Huntington, Charleston, Ashland, that area will get something out of it this morning, but for us, probably not. Uh, so, but our chance is coming. Our chance is going to come eventually this weekend, and uh, it's not going to be a lot of rain, but it will be enough, and that front coming in is going to be enough to cool us down and bring us some uh, refreshing temperatures, as a matter of fact. So get ready for that. But in the meantime, we stand in the throes of this excessive heat warning, which does continue again today for a good chunk of western Kentucky, southern Indiana, uh, and that includes the Bowling Green area, southern Kentucky, along and west of Interstate 65. Now, if you live out further out the Cumberland Parkway toward Campbellsville, Columbia, you know, that direction, you're, you're not in this. But you still need to uh, at least treat this if you're going to be outdoors like it's like it is, like everybody is covered in this. It does, you know, heat doesn't follow county lines and neither do storms. So you need to just, you know, take this on as, yeah, it's it's going to be another dangerously hot and humid day, uh, regardless of where you are in the Commonwealth or anywhere uh, beyond that, because it's just, it's just going to be horribly hot and humid, but still very summer-like. I mean, still, this is typical late August stuff for us. We just haven't seen it. It's delayed a little, but here it is. It's not record-breaking. It's not record-breaking. Not here. Not here. This is really more of a typical late August for our area, for the Mid-South region, 
the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, this is not unusual. The, I remember these kind of summers when I was a kid, so it's it's not anything new. It, it, it's presented sometimes as something new and hyped up as something new, but it's not new. This is really a normal, more typical uh, late August for our area. So it's not, you know, for those of you that are, you know, just, I, I'm not going to get on the soapbox, but just don't buy into the hype. You know, this is, this is like it should be in August before it gets cooler. Here's a look at uh, mesonet temperatures this morning. We're starting out mainly low, even mid 70s, and it's a humid air mass. And yes, it is going to be the start of another scorcher of a day. Uh, and probably back into the mid 90s, maybe even upper 90s for some of you as we hit that 96 mark. Yesterday, we'll probably do that or even more so today. It wouldn't surprise me if we hit 97. Uh, there may be some places that hit 98. It's the heat index in the afternoon, like we saw yesterday, that's going to hit 105, 106 maybe closer to 110, that's extremely dangerous. If you're going to be outdoors, stay hydrated, limit your time outdoors, get inside and cool off, take breaks as often as you can. If you have to do stuff outdoors, roofing, construction, farming, even just mowing the lawn or something, it's it's just not good. Uh, tomorrow, yes, still could be the hottest day of the year. If we get closer to that 99, as you see there, I don't, I don't, I'm not confident we'll get there, um, but it's going to be close. It is going to be close. And then we begin to see the changes Saturday afternoon with the passage of a cold front. Yeah, we're still going to see a hot day on Saturday to start. We'll get into the low 90s and then the change happens. We see more low to mid 80s. Even though it's showing 86 on Sunday, low to mid 80s, I'm throwing in some slight uh, rain chances in there during the afternoons when we could get something. But the the reinforcing shot now of cooler air is going to come midweek as we transition from August to September. Look at those around 80, around 80 temperatures. Some of you. Uh, could actually be upper 70s. <laughs> How about that? That is that is extra nice. And the lower dew points, lower humidity, that's going to make it feel even better. And then we go back into somewhat into the mid 80s for the end of next week. So it's coming. A nice, nice cool down is coming compared to what we've had lately. We just got to give this a little more time. Now, what about rain chances? Rain chances have bumped up just a little, not a lot, but at least there's some rain in there in the forecast. Here's a look at the model map. We start with right now in that complex of thunderstorms I showed you on radar that was moving more west. Now it's going to take a jaunt to the south and southeast as we go through the morning. You can watch it even begin to fall apart as it gets closer to Lexington and down toward maybe Campbellsville, Somerset, in that area later this morning, then it's gone. But uh, we're going to tap into some of this available moisture soon. Here we go into this afternoon, tonight, nothing showing up here. Now, as we get into Friday, here comes another complex, and then we've got two of them. We've got one over the Missouri boot hill that gets going. Then we got this leftover uh, out to the east of us. And these two are going to kind of make a run at us. I think by tomorrow afternoon, we're going to see an increase. And once that moisture gets tapped into at one place, then it's almost like the cap comes off of the atmosphere, the lid of warm air. And then we start to see development of showers and thunderstorms. Not everybody's going to get in on this, but I do think we'll see something develop tomorrow afternoon. So I've put in the chance there. Also a chance on Saturday afternoon and even 
Sunday and Monday, we've got rain chances in there. Uh, we've got the frontal boundary for one that's going to come through and then a back door kind of system that's going to come through later. That's going to help in that regard to tap into the moisture. The thing is we've had boundaries come in, but they've been very dry and all they've done is just kind of tease us a little bit. We haven't been sitting in the right spot, so to speak, to get the real moisture, but this time I think we've got a couple of chances to tap into the moisture and get something as far as rain, which we need. Uh, Right now we're running 2.38 inches behind year to date on pacing for rainfall. Uh, You know, month to date is not that bad, but it's, if you look at the year overall, we've done a good job of catching up and that's why August has been a bit cooler to start. Now that we've gotten the heat, it's been drier. We need to stay on pace here as far as precipitation. And I think we're going to, we're actually going to get back there uh, soon. Here's a look at the seven day map. High pressure, high pressure today. There's that decaying uh, system to the east of us. High pressure continues. Ruling the roost for this evening, another muggy night. Here we go into Friday morning, Friday after a midday or so. Here comes the first front. The second front is up here. And then that's followed by a big Canadian high pressure. That's the cool one. So here we go Friday into the afternoon. As the front sags southward, that's when we're it, it taps into that available moisture acts as a trigger, and we get these scattered showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon and the evening. Then they fade away after dark. Here we go into Saturday. The front sort of lingers, but it's not going to stay here uh, as we get into Saturday, but close enough to where we could see a shower to late Saturday afternoon. Sunday, then a trough develops. You see that right there, the straw, I like to call it. Uh, as it siphons up some of that moisture from the front to the south. Here comes our Arctic front to the north. Uh, So I'm going to keep in a chance of a shower late day on Monday, and then again into Tuesday. Here we go into Wednesday, and that front comes in with a reinforcing shot of cooler, drier air. And uh, we get the benefit of that by the middle of next week, and that's when you saw... On the 10-day blender, we look more around 80, maybe even upper 70s for some, which would uh, just be extremely nice. Okay, so hang in there. The two worst days, today, tomorrow, and then we start to see a little transition on Saturday, but a big transition on Sunday, and then a reinforcing shot of cooler air by Wednesday of next week. Today, Back into the mid to upper 90s with a heat index 105 or higher. Excessive heat warning still in effect for the area. All right, that'll do it this morning. I'm on the radio right now. It's Sam, 100.7 with the morning show. And then I'll see you tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on News 40. In the meantime, God bless you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning.